Hey, y'all, and thank you so much for tuning back into another segment here on GEMS Podcast. With me in the hot seat is Becca Powers, and here's a bit about Becca. She is an award-winning high-tech sales executive and motivational speaker. With over 20 years of experience, her career boasts Fortune 500 giants such as Dell and Cisco from growing up with musician parents who flirted with addiction to dropping out of college and becoming a single parent of two by the age of 28. Becca's guts and grit journey to success reaches beyond business. As a motivational speaker, she empowers women to prioritize themselves for a more fulfilling, joyful life. And today we're going to spend time talking about how to balance and how balancing can can help you lead for, um, lead away from burnout or vice versa. But you'll know more why we picked this topic because we are currently in Mental Health Awareness Month and who better to explain it than the expert herself. So without further ado, please welcome Becca Powers. Thank you so much, Genesis, for having me on. My pleasure. So let's start with our icebreaker, Becca. I want you to share something fun and interesting fun and interesting about yourself or something crazy that you've done in your life? Well, something fun about myself is when I was born, so I was born in 1978, just like putting you back in that time frame. my parents will, were full-time musicians. So they had like long hippie hair and all of that stuff. And they even opened, like I'm from Indiana, but John Mellencamp is really famous from Indiana. And back in the seventies, they were his opening cover band. Uh, super cool Mm -hmm. um (laughs) but that's kind of it's kind of cool and funny because sometimes women don't always say what year they were born because it dates them but then you're like hey I was born this year yeah I was born this year my my parents were hippies I'm just going all out (laughs) so I see that you have in your background harness your inner CEO. So does that tie in with your message for helping other people understand what burnout is so they don't reach that point? Yeah, absolutely. Harness your inner CEO when I, I would say is the antidote or the solution to, to burnout. It is the rise out of it. Um, my quick story is being with my background, being in, um, you know, in a high achieving sales role, whether I'm a sales leader or I'm quota driven, um, I have very high, uh, very high stress in my role. And then I'm a mom on top of it. You just add on all the hats. I have probably burnt myself out at least five times, but this last time was hopefully my last and final time was in 2016. And I, fell to the bathroom floor on my knees in complete fatigue and exhaustion. Like I had worked myself that hard and ignored all the signs. Like we'll talk about burnout today, but I ignored all the signs and symptoms of burnout. And I kept powering through, I think as women, sometimes, especially as women, but as a human in general, we're very resilient. It's one of our strengths. And we're like, we could power through. And so like, and I'm really positive. So like positive mindsetted myself into burnout because I went too far with it. I was like, I could do this again. And I'm strong. And, um, you know, when I hit the bathroom floor, it was probably my most powerless moment of my life where I had no other option, but to, you know, call out to the universe or God, whatever name you want to put on it. But I had to pray because I had nowhere else to go. And I was like, I need help. And I can't power through another day. I, whatever ideas and solutions I'm putting together no longer work. And, um, it was like the moment that I finally like let it all go. I've remembered something and this is where the book came from and how I really got passionate about studying burnout, surveying it and all this stuff too. But I remembered something a former VP of sales told me, and he told me he was proud of some of the decisions I was making at the time. And he said, Becca, you are the CEO of your life. So here I am powerless on the bathroom floor. And I remembered that I was the CEO of my life. And in that moment, I 
felt so empowered. I was like, I almost laughed. I was like, well, if I'm the CEO of my life, then why am I crying on the bathroom floor? Like I have a lot more power in this. And I swear to you, I rose up off the floor, a different woman than the one that went down. And wow. So anyway, I'll pause there. Yeah. I'm, I'm just um, amazed because it's like you hit the bathroom floor and it took hitting the bathroom floor for you to have a wake up call and realize that there were signs there all along, but you weren't really listening to those intrinsic signs that your body was giving you. You were just kind of go, 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 like the energizer bunny, but then something had to come and knock you to your knees. So some people may yes. say, was it God that knocked you to your knees? Was it the universe? Because that was the only way that you were able to see and connect with the fact that you were misfiring. And how many times, if you think about a vehicle, have cars misfired and people keep on driving the car and before you know it, your engine blows up or something yes. major happens. That's a great analogy because that's exactly what happens in burnout. We keep you know, pushing that car, like, oh, it's all right. It's just, it's just misfiring. No, the misfiring is the problem. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now let's dive into what is a burnout? Because I always like to ask the question. I know some people may say, well, Genesis, that's a dumb question. I think we all know what burnout is, but I'm like, do you really know what burnout is? And do you know the signs of it? Because if you don't know the true definition of burnt out, then you're not going to know the signs or the symptoms that come along with it. So you can know what to look out for. So you can mitigate getting to that point. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, it's a really good question to ask and a fair assumption, because I think we externally know what burnout looks like, like, Hey, I hit the bathroom floor. People could say she's burnt out. Yes. But to your point, there was misfiring happening way before burnout even happened. And so I've studied about 8,000, I surveyed 8,000 people on burnout and then took all the data and geeked out and formed a lot of um, opinions and framework based upon what I learned. And one of the things that I thought was really fascinating is only 2% of working professionals that took the survey are experiencing health. So that means 98% are either in or on the verge of burnout. So if you're listening, there's a 98% chance that this is going to resonate with you. <laughs> so, um, but you know, what, what does burnout look like? I really think it starts and, and I created five stage, the five stages of burnout. Um, but the first stage of burnout is really, I call it the unders. But it's like when we're at work or even at home, some, it doesn't have to be at work, but I specialize in workplace burnout. Um, it's the unders, it's feeling undervalued, underappreciated, underrecognized. There's a big movement going on for underpaid, right? But when you have any one of the unders, but especially a combination of the unders happening at one time, that's where burnout takes root. And those, that's where we start kind of that powering or pushing through that I was talking about. It's like, and we start questioning ourselves. Am I really getting underpaid? I think I'm getting underpaid. Sally's getting more, but you know, I came in at the, we, all, this justification starts and it's like, oh, they promoted Bob. They didn't promote me. And we start forming these like opinions. And so the natural reaction of a human being when they are feeling undered anything is to over. It's an overcompensation. We don't want to be seen as not valuable, not worthy, whatever. And then we start overworking or we start over committing ourselves or overextending ourselves. And in that, in that over is where we start um, misfiring. And those are the things that are going under on underneath the surface that we're not talking about as much when it comes to burnout. Absolutely. And I have experienced the under, um, the underpay from working in corporate America, especially oil and gas, I was significantly underpaid for about four and a half years after I had wow. got my degree. And it wasn't until I spoke up in the vice president's meeting where I had no idea 
that HR was in the room. But one week later, I got a $20,000 salary increase. And I got a bump in my classification level from a 15 to a 22. But I was doing all the accolades. I was traveling for the company. Everything looked great on paper, but there was no respect on my paycheck. So I felt underpaid, undervalued. I was the only woman of color on my team. And sometimes you also feel like your voice is silenced, like you're seen, but you're not heard. And I think that could also play into the burnout. So it's like you already have those different warning lights that's coming on on your car, but you just overlook it because you're like, oh, I get really good perks or I have really good benefits or you're afraid to step outside of your comfort yes. zone because you may not know what the repercussions are. But then that um, awakened is like, inside of me is like, how much are you allowing someone to pay you to sleep on your dreams? How much more are you settling? And you have to really go through that internal inventory and that analysis in order to realize your worth and see yourself as an asset versus a liability. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, there's something very specific about what you said that is like the teetering into the severity of burnout. So you laid it down, right? You were working at the like high level of capacity. I would say overworking or over, you know, committing, extending, because you were doing all the right things for the undervalued, underpaid, under recognized, right? And it does exactly what you say after increasing your overs and then at level three burnout at stage three is our longing for belonging. And that's when we start to question, am I in the right place? I feel unheard, unseen, you know, like then kind of some of those uns and you start questioning, am I in the right place? And you start doing the bargaining that you are doing, but I'm getting good benefits. I'm doing this. And so you stay, but you kind of go silent and it goes from being, having passion and, and almost like, um, having your voice or being like outspoken on the team and contributing to just like, Hey, I'm just going to chill here. Cause yeah, I don't know what's going on, but that actually is that stage three. And so there's two more stages, but I'll pause there because you absolutely like, you can see that the stages build like that. Cause that's where you ended up. Absolutely. So there's like, I always think that there's a stage where you just coast, like, once you get sick and tired, and you've had enough, you're going to do the bare minerals. You're like, I'm just going to do enough what they're paying me, I'm not going to go over, um, over top anymore. And I'm just gonna go in work my eight hours or however many hours and leave and you are already mentally checked out. And when you get to the point where you're mentally checked out of a place, it could be a relationship too, because burnout yes. applies in all areas. That is a dangerous warning sign that you need to exit stage left or stage right. Find that <laughs> yes, emergency man. exit because <laughs> no good is going to come out of that because by that point, you're a walking, talking, ticking time bomb. And if someone just says something to you, the wrong thing, the wrong thing on the wrong day where you know you pulled up in that parking garage and you just rolled your eyes or you had that pit in your stomach or you saw that person in your relationship where you felt like you could just smack them up and down the field. That is a raw yes. sign. Yes. And that's funny because that will bring us right into stage four. So if you deal with stage one, stage two and stage three and make no change, then you go into stage four, which is exactly what you were just talking about. I call it the, um, like it's, it's all the, I call it disharmony in the bodies because we have four primary bodies, maybe five, if you include the financial, but we have our emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental bodies. And when you push through all that, like said, your anxiety is going to go up, your stress is going to go up, your patience is going to go up in your body. You're starting to start feeling tension in your shoulder. You're going to start getting sick to your stomach. You're going to start clenching your teeth. That's like physical body responding. And that's why I call it disharmony. Because if you had harmony, your body would be in ease and you'd be in the flow and you'd be like, yeah, this feels really good. But when you're in disharmony, everything starts feeling hard. Everything is taxing and to your point in my own personal story, it was just days before I hit the bathroom floor, but I was in stage four of stage five, like right on the edge there. And, um, 
but I walked in the house and I had kids, I had kids in middle school and they run up to me and they're like, mom. And they're like, so excited to tell me about their day. And I remember I just snapped. I was like, can I just put my purse down? Like, I just want to put my purse down. I want five minutes. And like, I remember seeing their little faces go super sad and I could still cry. Like even in my dedication in the book is kind of dedicated to, to that aspect of, you know, I learned that if I thrive, my kids thrive. If I'm surviving, then my kids are just surviving. And it really empowered me to make the changes that I needed to make. But to your point, like that stage four, that's an example of what happens at stage four. So let's just recap this, uh, the four stages so far before we go into stage five. So yes. Stage one would be the unders. So that's when you start to feel underpaid, underappreciated, underrecognized, undervalued. Um, you know, normally, like I said, it's a combination of the unders that will throw you into, I'm going to prove myself now. Now I'm going into the overs. Now I'm overstressing, overworking, overwhelming, overcommitting, taking on extra projects. It's a really common thing. And that's where you know, I'm just going to pause too, because if you're in the workplace, that's where people get like their kudos. They're like, oh, you know, Genesis really stepped up, you know, or Becca really went over and beyond. And it's like, meanwhile, I'm inside feeling so disrespected and so undervalued. That's why I did all these, these things. And then I still didn't get a pay raise, all that. So you go from the unders to the overs, then to belonging and you're like wow this job used to excite me but now I don't know if I belong here I think I'm gonna coast <laughs> you know I'm gonna disengage a little bit and then um the fourth one like we just talked about if you stay in stage one that misfiring right of the engine you're like oh it's cool you know you miss stage one stage two stage three then your body's emotional physical mental and spiritual are gonna start and financial too start you know you like you're not tapping into the wealth that you could, even if you, you know, are still making okay money. So there's disharmony in the bodies. And do you want me to go into stage five now? Yes. Now bring us into stage five. All right. So stage five is not great. No stage five. I call it the devastation of the D's. Um, and I call it the devastation of the D's because that's where we see things really start to break down. We start seeing deep depressions. We start seeing disease. We start seeing divorce. We start seeing debt. We start seeing drug use. And I don't even mean like heroin and stuff like that. What I mean is people are going to the doctors because they have anxiety and stress and they're starting to get prescribed sleeping medication, anxiety medication, depression medication, when in essence, it's probably the environment that's causing, you know, it's all those stages. So, um, and then uh, death is, would be the really big one, but I mean, unfortunately, especially in workplace, we see a lot of heart, heart disease and suicide even, and things like that. So that's the five is the extreme, but it could also be, um, I want to share a little bit of a story, um, as I wrap up five. So in my case, I did go into stage five burnout. I ended up working myself into two anxiety disorders, um, adult ADHD and um, autoimmune disease. And it was six months after I left the, the environment that I tolerated, which again was great for other people, it just wasn't great for me. So it's, it can be that too. If your colleagues are like, this is the best place I ever worked, you got to be able to be your own guy. That's why I said, harness your inner CEO. You got to know you like the back of your hand. So, but six months later, my hair was falling out in clumps. Right. So there was the aftermath of burnout that I had to clean up too. And that's why stage, you don't want to get to stage five, obviously, but that's why if you do allow yourself to get to stage five, there's going to be cleanup. Yeah. And you don't want them to say clean up on aisle nine, clean up <laughs> on aisle nine, because you already know what you need to do. So you shouldn't allow your body to break down and suffer along the way because you have a family to think about. You have other people that are depending on you. But the most important thing is you first, that self-care. And that's why my other analogy, they always say this on the aircraft, 
put on your own mask first before you put on somebody else's. But I think in today's society, we're so busy trying to check things off this to-do list or trying to meet the status quo, trying to meet the metrics, trying to meet the needs of every and anybody else yes. who may never seek to validate us, but we're looking for validation from them. We're looking for appeasement. We want that gold star, but does that gold star really solidify and define who we are as an individual? So unless you start beating at your own drum, harnessing your own CEO and being who you were created to be, then you are in some form of burnout, whether or not yes, you man. realize it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I have the goosebumps to head to toe. You couldn't have said it any better. And like, as we wrap up this talk, I want to just hit on something. So like people are like, well, what can I do to get out of burnout? And, and you said it, but I want to like highlight it for the listeners. And it's, I call it um, just permission to prioritize your well being. You know, to your point, we are very, and, it, and like we're just kind of societally raised this way where we do seek validation outside of ourselves and approval. And so we end up being towards the bottom of the priority list, not because we don't care about ourselves, just because we were never taught that it was, we were supposed to be first. <laughs> You know, and so that's like the thing that I just want to say to the listeners is just give yourself permission to prioritize your well being first and then prioritize work or then prioritize your family. It doesn't make you selfish, it actually makes your life run so much better. Absolutely. And I would say it does not make you selfish, it makes you selfless and it's establishing boundaries. But then when you establish those boundaries, it's enforcing those boundaries because that is a sign of respect. Respect yourself enough and make sure other people respect you and don't bend and break at what other people want you to do because they're not the ruler of your life. And let's jump into the call to action. So Becca, is there anything else that you would like the audience to do once they hear this recording? And then go ahead and plug your contact information. Okay, awesome. Well, if you're listening to this and you wanna know if you're in burnout or not, you can go to beccapowers.com forward slash burnout. And I have a survey for you. Just go and take it. You'll find out yourself where it's danger in. And then um, you can find me on social media. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, same handle at Becca Powers 1313. Amazing. And all of Becca Powers contact information will be in the show notes. Make sure you read, scroll down and tap in. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We're on 40 one plus platforms. Also, you can see all things video content on our YouTube channel, which is at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank each one of you for tuning in on a consistent basis to support the guests that I bring on, as well as myself, because we are on a mission to educate, inspire, and motivate while we interweave the dots and connect while we interweave the dots and connect all things inclusion, diversity, equity, and belonging, because regardless if you believe it or not, it takes all of us coming together to really create those synergies to make this world a better place. So until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day.